record and um, that's it. So I'm ready. Though, awesome. I don't know what we're talking about. Well, um, funnily enough, <laughs> I was just thinking about that. We left tags in the air last week. So last week we talked a lot about tags and we talked about tags um, as a way of grouping items together, of categorizing items. Mm -hmm. So the presence of a tag attached to the tiddler um, it, it endows it with the property of being in a particular category. And we, we, um, uh, that was about as far as we got, but there's a couple more bits of tags Good. that are, um, that are relevant. So okay. the first is that in order to give something a tag, it needs to be modified. And so, um, that's a kind of a limitation. So say if there were a way for all of your tiddlers to live in my tiddly wiki and I wanted to categorize them. A side effect of me going into them, editing them, and modifying the tags um, would be that I would lose your last modification date and lose your name as the author because I would have become the modifier. And so that's, that's kind of conceptually bothersome, possibly, because it means that I've changed the thing of yours. And so, for instance, one of the things I might want to do is if I do have a tiddler of yours, I might want to check perhaps automatically to see whether you've changed your copy of it. And if I've changed my copy of it, then obviously that um, complicates the process of seeing whether it's changed. So to me, though, that suggests that the this is part of the problems overall that run through TiddlyWiki, that it's difficult to collaborate. No, I think here this is... Um, this is quite a low level thing. This is about the the, the algebra of tiddlers okay. uh, and and the implications of modifying a tiddler and possibly okay. so, yeah so but you could you could switch by just using created date and created author in a sense that well but it 's more <laughs> like imagine that there are these two things there 's the category uh -huh. and there 's the thing, and we 're saying. To put the thing in the category, we make a modification to the thing. So the record of the things yeah. being in the category is inside the thing. The other way of doing it, obviously, is that, that you have the category, which lists all the things that are in it. And so with that alternate arrangement, um, each time I add something to that category, I need to modify this category, which in fact has become a list. But the beauty of it is that I can add items like this one over here without modifying them. So I see tags and lists as being two, um, it's, it's not the, um, the, the what's that, they're two orthogonal ways of marking the relationships between tiddlers. And in fact, there are some situations. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. So, oh, okay. I never, un thank you. So lists. It's analogous. Go on, sorry. Yeah. So lists are pointing in a yes. sense, at tiddlers, but not touching them. They, they stand yes. outside of the tiddler. Yes. Whereas tags are, are properties of tiddlers. Exactly that. Yes. And if we could, so from a usability, this is, you know, you always end up in usability quickly, right? But um, to me, yeah, I never understood that. But to me, the problem with lists is that they're so annoying to maintain. But because right now, editing them in a single line. Yeah, yeah. they're just like, they're not yeah. there. You can't drag and drop. You can't. Or, yeah, you, know, yeah. You, you should. You should. You should keep whinging about that because that's one okay. of that's a fairly basic thing. Yeah. But in some way, you know, I think. Um, but what's interesting is that I and and after our conversation last week, the exercise that I wrote for this week, which I should show you, and, and we'll, we'll spend a few minutes looking at it. Um, pulled on lists, references, and tags, and the exercise is called relationships and says, how do you build and modify and mark relationships right. between tiddlers? And so this is the perfect discussion for tomorrow then? Yes, it's perfect yeah. because, it, I mean, so the exercise asks, based on our conversation last week, um, and I, I introduced commands that you interestingly said, like backlinks. Well, that's not a command that anybody would use. <laughs> that's one I needed to, to do something. <laughs> You know, I built that for myself, but then I find it as a user. And so it's, it's, um, and I understood lists in a different way. And then I think I was sort of 
coming around to what you were saying, but I hadn't gotten there yet. That's really interesting. So you put it. And also, of course, just to freak you out further, yeah. let's Good. not forget that the tags field is a list. Yes. Um, itself. So I think, I think list is the primitive thing. And then what we're talking about is two conventions for how we use a list. We've got lists on items, and we call that the tags list, and it's the list of categories that we assign to the item. And then over here, um, we've got the... Um, Oh gosh, I lost my thread now. But um, over here, we've got the um, the category, which is also a list. So the implementation is the same. The implementation of tags and the list field is the same. It's a different convention about how we use them. So these tiddlers have lists, and we have conventions around the interpretation of the data in those lists. So if I'm sitting on a tiddler, and I want to tag it with something or I put a tag in it that's essentially just changing a list I'm right. not changing the tiddler that I'm using as a tag mm, that's correct so if I want to open a tiddler and modify it and add something to one of its lists maybe its tags list of course I'm modifying it. So, yeah. why, so why is that problematic? Because sometimes, the two, well, several reasons actually. Think about the way that um, you can have lots of different, items can be in lots of different lists, in conflicting lists. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, conflicting tags show up because you, they're in the same space. Um, Maybe conflicting tags. So, say if you wanted to, let me try and think of a plausible example. Two different systems of tagging, one with an S and one with a Z. Mm -hmm. um, you'd see them. You'd see them both. I mean, you could work your way around it. Um, so, accessorize, basically, you know, organize and so on. Um, but that's a terrible example, I fear. Well, but I, it's, I, think, I think the example that I led with is the, most, is, is the strongest. So, mm -hmm. that's where it's, the reason why I don't want to modify it is because it's not mine. So if I want to maintain this distinction that I've got a workspace that's got your stuff in it and my stuff, and perhaps it's not your stuff, perhaps it's my stuff in the past. Mm -hmm. So perhaps I'm reviewing what I wrote a year ago. I want, to keep the, I want to keep the history intact. So a note that I wrote a year ago, to me, I, let's say I would like to regard it as frozen. I know if I look at it in 10 years' time, it's going to be exactly the same. And yet... My interpretation of the significance of that note has changed. So I want to categorize it. I want to thread it up differently. So the and way to do that is to leave the original note in place and add the name of that note to a list. Or, to, or you could do it as a tag, of course. So, well, so, so, so I could create a new fiddler that's note. just tagged. But in either, I mean, they're equivalent because both things are lists. And the differences between them is how the conventions that we establish around using tiddlers, how they you know, coexist um, with the other conventions that we might be using. So you know, we're probably already using tags for something. So therefore, in the decision whether to use lists or tags for something else, we'd probably be taking into account what we're already using tags for. So what if in, you write a note, it's wonderful, great thought, and I do this in class. Um, so I've got a note, and now I'm teaching the next semester, and I say, oh, I want, to, I want, to, I want people to look, go look at that. So I might want to go through my notes and tag them. These are the things that are of interest this week. Yeah. And that's a normal behavior for me. It's like, oh, yeah. I've always been like, agreed with you. It's like, but now they floated up to the top of the recent yeah. one. And yeah. I don't want people to read them that yeah. way. So yeah. Yes. So, so a lot of this acknowledges uh, in, in classic wikis the primacy of recent changes. Mm -hmm. you know, recent changes is how you tell what's going on and any kind of messing around with that. Um, but the problem is, is that I, in, that extra, in that example, I've behaved poorly as a writer. Better would be to go through those tiddlers that are of interest and tag them to in another tiddler saying go look at these and one way to 
do that would be almost through some sort of like a backlinks approach. So I think you're thinking about what's the optimum way or kind of to, to, to represent human interactions, the writer's interactions with his content with other writers. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I love about that way of thinking is that's, the en- that's as endless as the discussion about the ways that we can rearrange words to make sentences. Oh, yeah. And it's as important as that. You know, everything is about the words that we arrange to make sentences. But in a way, our way into this was um, the point about the algebra is we want to establish the little mechanisms that we use to connect it. There's there's this point about we want them to make them minimal. Um, And so part of the rationale for the structures we're talking about now, Mm -hmm. lists and tags and so on, is this idea of building things up from the minimum um, capabilities that could possibly support the flexibility that we want. And then simultaneously, there's this discussion that kind of threads through it about what's actually going on in terms of collaboration, in terms of the writer collaborating with himself in the past and you know, all this amazing stuff. Um, but I've got more. <laughs> that um, uh, Something I've remarked on before is the way that TiddlyWiki, to me, is folded over on itself in, in one particular sense. And it's the way that once we have a mechanism, we endlessly reuse it for everything else that looks like it could be that mechanism. And so lists is a great example. There's one mechanism for lists, and it's the way that lists are represented within fields. And then we reuse it for the list field and the tag field, tags field. Um, now, one of the... Um, I'm going to just take a step away for a second to try and explain the final missing functionality of tags that we haven't touched on yet, which is about the ordering of items that carry a particular tag. Okay, yes. The the origin of this is Uh back in the Tiddlywiki Classic days, um, there was a menu on the left-hand side. Sorry, that's left to me. I realize in the recording, that's left, isn't it? Um, And um, that left-hand menu, the way that you edited it was you modified a Tiddler called Main Menu. Yes. There was Main Menu in Camel camel Case with two capital M's. Yes. Um, And... um, I made a Main Menu 2... And instead of having them horizontal, I made them yeah. vertical, and yeah. I had a couple menus across the top. Yeah. That was my yeah, interest. It, was, it yeah. was, I mean, the, one of the things that was very interesting about it is establishing the convention of a thing called main menu. Yes. What you just said, people then moved it around and displayed, so the semantics were the same. This is the list yeah. of links that should be continually available while you're using this wiki, and then the various themes laid them out differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, that mechanism of modifying a tiddler in order to modify the user interface um, was a very early trick with TiddlyWiki and I loved it. I loved the way that it sort of intermingled and reused the fabric of the user interface and the content that you were working with and once you'd learned to edit your content you'd also learned to edit the user interface because they were the same thing, this, this kind of idea. But um, a guy called Greg Wolf, the founder of Una Mesa, um, one time said to me in passing that he wished that main menu had been a tag and not a title. And um, what he meant was, he, he was hitting on a problem that had, had already hit us all, really, that you might have more than one thing inside your wiki that all wanted to own the main menu to put stuff in it. So something like Tiddly Map, you know, the equivalent of Tiddly Map in Tiddly Wiki Classic days has its own unique left-hand menu, and then you merge it with something else. That, so his idea was if you had, if the logic was that um, all of the Tiddler's tagged main menu would appear one after the other down the main menu, then it would be easy for any component to add or remove components from the main menu. So I love that idea too, and it's um, you see it everywhere in TiddlyWiki that um, within the user interface, um, every um, item that you see um, is generally represented by a tag. So, for instance, the the toolbar buttons at the top of a Tiddler. Yes. Okay. You. Oh, we just had a hiccup in our internet and um, Jeremy will be back in a moment. 
Are you back? Oh, come on, Jeremy. So we were talking about, and I was, there you are. That's my internet. Sorry, you're, you're back. Yes, that's my internet. Oh, good. I'm okay. In that case, I'm sure. Same so I'm not sure I'm following that exactly and how that's... So this is the idea that um, in... Uh, well, actually, I should screen share and I, yeah. can, I can do a demo or two was, to show you in terms of... Yeah, um, I remember here. the main menu and then I got distracted thinking about main menu and thinking that what you were describing is the way that I remember Tiddlywiki Classic working. Yeah, well, that's... Um, so it might have been that I wrote code for myself and I might have used tags. If you use tags in main menus, didn't they create these automatic pull-downs? Um, um, no, I think you were using um, extensions okay. by the I'm, sound of it. Um, but yeah, I must have been using some set of... Because it's funny. I think you were. I mean, pretty much in the in Tiddlywiki Classic days, pretty much everybody did. Okay. Because, um, there was... Because one had to. Yeah, I, just, I don't remember what they were. I remember tagly tagging and... and um, okay. And, yeah. So, uh, hopefully, tell me if I'm screen yep. sharing. Correctly. Yep, you got it. So, this... A little bit of fun is the first public version of Tiddlywiki. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you can see bold uh, tiddlers that exist. Um, and um, there's a tiny amount of content in it. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a, uh, uh, that's a list of all tiddlers in alphabetical order. <laughs> so it's the simplest possible user interface. And those are the most recently edited ones. And here's this main menu tiddler. So if I edit that and um, put at the top, hello, Steve, um, there I've modified the main menu. So um, the... Oh, okay. I never, I, I, I don't, oh, yes, I do recall that. Yes, now I remember, right. And that's where you'd put tags. And if you put tag in the main menu, it creates an automatic pull down. Uh, you, you, yes, that would be a classic way of doing it. Yeah. But this functionality has survived for a long time. So this is the second version, which was the first one to kind of really go mainstream. Mm -hmm. And again, exactly the same deal. Um, I um, create a main menu in the same way. Right. Whereas in, um, uh, here we are in TiddlyWiki 5. So in TiddlyWiki 5, um, an equivalent of the main menu um, would be these um, tabs on the right hand side mm -hmm. um, and each of those oh um, this is my previews in the oh previews in the wrong place and I can't click um, let me do this um, um, actually do this no I'll do this oh Okay. Sorry, I couldn't type and talk at the same time. Yes, I can. Um, so in TiddlyWiki um, in TiddlyWiki five, you see some occurrences of the same idea. So here in control panel, we've got title of this TiddlyWiki mm -hmm. and subtitle. Now if I edit the title, hello Steve, right. you see it over at the right. This over here on the left is actually a link. And we see that when I was edit typing Hello Steve, I was right. editing that tiddler. So that's precisely analogous to what we've just seen with the main menu. It's a magic tiddler um, with a magic name. Um, but uh, for most of the bits of user interface of TiddlyWiki, like for instance, these buttons here, mm -hmm. um, we've got the same problem that we identified with the main menu, that you've got potentially many items that you might want to mingle together to comprise. So you know, when you when you install a plugin, it ought to be able to install one of these things. So our mechanism for doing that is system tags. So basically, tiddlers 
with any of these magic tags as opposed to magic titles get folded into the user interface. So a really simple example would be um, tags page controls. And if I um, get the info panel up for it, I can see there's a list of all of the things with that tag. Um, and um, for instance, one of them is this, the control panel button. Mm -hmm. So if I click that button, it literally opens the control panel. <clears throat> Um, and if we edit it, it tells us that we're editing a shadow tiddler. And here are the magic incantations that make a button that ultimately um, provides a link. Where does it do it? Um, that ultimately, there you go, that provides a link to the tiddler um, called control panel. So, the, so, so just if I, yeah. if I create a, if I, um, yeah. if I create a new tiddler with that tag, so I do that, I, I'm on the tag, tags page controls, and I say new here. That creates a new tiddler with that tag, and I, it doesn't matter what I call it, mm -hmm. so I'll call it um, nothing. And then I say, hello, Steve. And now that text appears here. So um, the, and if I create a, let's create a clone of that tiddler, um, and we'll type in this one. Hello, Jeremy. And now we've added hello, Jeremy. Now, of course, hello, Jeremy and hello, Steve aren't icons. But if I did core images down arrow, as an example, um, that is, uh, we put an icon there. So the, in the way that um, in TiddlyWiki Classic, we customize the user interface by modifying tiddlers with magic names. Here, we declare a tiddler to be a part of the TiddlyWiki user interface by giving it a specific tag. So literally each, you see this one, tags control panel. Um, each of those is um, a tab of the control panel, info, appearance, settings, savings, plugins, keyboard shortcuts. And if I open one of those there, you can see the content of the keyboard shortcuts tab mm -hmm. control panel. So this idea uh, um, of using tags to, by the way, I explained it to them, was to mark tiddlers as being part of the user interface. So it says it, it causes that tiddler to be inserted into the user interface. It's kind of in um, computer scientists, have a very similar concept called aspect-oriented programming, um, which um, and, and it's quite powerful because it keep, it means that what you see here, the sidebar, instead of being something that I've laid out and said I'll have the plus and the cog and the tick, it's something that's the result of running a recipe in effect, and that makes it much more dynamic than something that I've configured individually myself. Um, From a writer's perspective, what I would want to think, and, and this is a little speculative on my part because I'm I don't, but I would think that somebody writing literature, fiction, nonfiction, a computer game or something would want would find this attractive because they could begin to build that interface as they're writing. Yes, I mean, you could certainly, you could imagine, for instance, using a very similar approach to say writing is going to be divided up into chapters and you wanted certain sections to be at the beginning of each chapter, even with a little bit of repetition. Mm -hmm. um, and you could do it with a tag. So we'd have a tag for things that should be shown at the beginning of each chapter. And you, know, you can imagine exactly how that would work. Oh, let's add a glossary. Oh, I know, let's add a copyright. <clears throat> This. and yes. then magically those things would appear in the right places so i i mean you're, you're right to shift it around to writers because i'm explaining the the perspective that i bring is often the motivation for tiddlywiki being like it is and the odd thing is as a user of tiddlywiki those are probably almost never the questions that are in people's minds because you know one's primary concern is trying to wade through the jungle not to try and <laughs> imagine how the jungle arose 
No, but I think it's understanding that and seeing what it does is it allows you to see possibilities. Um, well, this is a good example where what's happened is that the, the motivation for a bit of functionality or a, a, a capability of TiddlyWiki come, came from building TiddlyWiki itself. But in implementing that capability, the one that I'm just about to show you, um, care was taken to make it a general purpose capability. So although um, the, there's the driver for lots of bits of TiddlyWiki was TiddlyWiki itself, those bits profess to be very general purpose and usable in you know when you're not just building TiddlyWiki's own user interface. But look, here's the. It's a very, let me ask you a question that probably. Uh, it's a it's an odd question, but if I want to explain to somebody why are all those really important tiddlers tagged with or, or named dollar sign colon slash tags slash what does the tags mean in those names of those tiddlers that you scroll up a little bit yeah what is the word tag I mean why are what's the point of the dollar sign colons and then what's the meaning of the word tags in that tiddler name? which I think you just explained but so, uh, differently. No, 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 this is a very good question. So the first thing is these, because we're in TiddlyWiki, these are tiddlers. So mm -hmm. yes. they couldn't be called things like help panel, or if they were called things like help panel or filter, it would stop you using those titles for anything else. So part of the motivation was to create a title that the user of TiddlyWiki was unlikely to accidentally use themselves. So a convention that TiddlyWiki adopts is to use this prefix dollar colon slash, mm -hmm. um, as we call it, the prefix for system tiddlers. But it's basically just a convention that says, this is part of the guts of TiddlyWiki. This is part of the internal. So it's supposed to act, the dollar sign across TiddlyWiki is supposed to act as a sign saying, here be dragons. So to, if you're a casual user of TiddlyWiki, if you see a dollar, you've kind of just veered over the fence into the wilder part of the field, um, mm -hmm. is, is the kind of psychological significance of it. There's also, it's an emoticon, um, of course. Um, I'm sure you've noticed this. Um, and it's a very rarely used emoticon. I never something. noticed that. Um, so, I mean, as usual, one turns one's head, um, but it's somebody with crazy quaffed hair and um, a diagonal mouth. <laughs> okay. So, a sort of nonplussed expression. So, um, the joke, and it's not much of a joke, is that that's kind of the reaction that you'd expect an end user to have when they stumble on any of these tiddlers with this magic prefix because okay. this is all the internal guts of tiddly. So, so as students or writers, uh, we, if we were being adventurous, we would start adopting that as well. To For stuff you wanted to hide, stuff. basically. So anything that's plumbing. <clears throat> so say if you were leaving a note to yourself to say, remember to clean this up later. Um, it, you might want to keep that off of your list of all tiddlers. So, I mean, a, a beautiful thing with small tiddlywikis is being able to look through the list of all right. tiddlers. If there's only got 20 items in or something, you then get that lovely and very conventional sense of being able to kind of keep track of how much of it you've read, where you are, and so on. So in those situations and others, kind of polluting that list will matter to writers who want to you know, I, I think what I would like for writers is for every word and mark on the screen to either be their words or to be the minimum necessary machinery to enable readers to do what they want to react to, to interact with the text, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, okay. let's look at another example. Is the, but, the, but then the, well, the word tags. Mm -hmm. So you put oh, the well, word tags in the names of the tiddlers. So, so what we, um, system tiddlers is a common computer science idea um, of name, name spacing. And it's mm -hmm. basically where the names of things is cut up into chunks that get sure. progressively more specific. So um, in order to be able to call the tags whatever we like, including words that we might want to use elsewhere, we have the prefix to say, I'm a tag. So the prefix is plural because it's that same prefix is used before all of the tags. Maybe it should have been tag 
it's an <laughs> it's arguable. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, this example tag sidebar. If I create a new tiddler with that tag, and I'll call it hello Jeremy. Um, it uh, and put something in it. We're not seeing uh, this. I think we're off your screen. Did you fade out again? Um, oh, I'm sorry. So, so sorry. Yep. Yeah, uh, we, didn't, we didn't see it. There it is. Now it is. Okay. Uh, okay, great. So I'm just going to make it actually a little bit shorter. I'm going to uh, make its title just be those three dots. Uh -huh. um, so you can see that it's gone at the end of the list. And so that's something um, that we need to be able to control. So all of these user interface items that we saw this immense list of magic tags for parts of the TiddlyWiki user interface, we need to be able to control the order that they appear. So um, I made a deliberate choice that the add new Tiddler button was the most important, and that's why it's on the left. Mm -hmm. We need a mechanism. Because these things are all four separate Tiddlers, we need a mechanism to say the order that they arrive in. So let's have a look at tag sidebar to see how that's done. And if I edit the tag sidebar, so this is the tiddler representing the magic tag that um, causes things to become um, uh, tabs in the sidebar. And you can see it's a tiddler without a text field and the list field, and as we've discussed, it's, uh, it's quite difficult to read in this format, but it contains four things, the names of four tiddlers, and you would recognize them as being the tiddlers that open contents recent tools more so sure enough if i drag one of them to move it so now we've got the recent at the beginning i press ok and now the recent tab is the left hand one so what and you're seeing the, there is and it's the same with tags view site um view template and so absolutely yeah so, so if we go in, view templates a great example that when we look in there we see <clears throat> Uh, very difficult to see, but let me put it in here so that you can see. Yes. Um, uh, so we... These this is what I was suggesting titles. about lists. Absolutely. So, the, so that's, this is a kind of a bug, and I say you should whinge about it, because yeah. it, it does. It gets in the way of something that's conceptually quite important, but I'll show you in a, in a moment. Such a British term. Which, <laughs> Which one? Whinge must be. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's good. I like. Um, I, I uh, when I was eighteen, I wrote a computer book in English, and it was in order for it to be published in the U.S. It was translated into American, <laughs> um, which was a wonderful. I, and obviously, as a young British person, I had little idea that so much British speak was um, actually impenetrable to American. Yeah. Anyway, so what we're seeing here is this mechanism whereby the tiddlers representing tags um, can have, don't have to have, a list field. Mm -hmm. If that list field is present, then the ordering of tiddlers within that list field determines the order that tiddlers with that tag are displayed. So if I go into, um, if I go in here, actually, sorry, here we've got, uh, I'm so sorry. This is the tiddler core UI sidebar open that represents the um, open tab. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me. It's this one. So now it's got tag sidebar. That's what makes it appear there. But it's also, it appears in the list that we saw below. But if I edit this tiddler and ignore the warnings, remove the tag and say, okay, the um, open tab had disappeared. Um, and yet, if we go back to the sidebar tag, the open tag, the open tab is still listed there. So what, the reason why I'm emphasizing that, this is a very subtle point, is that yeah. by introducing this list field, it means that tags now have two ends, potentially, there's one end where the tiddler itself carries the tag, but there's the other end where the tag itself carries a list field that may list the names of tiddlers with that tag. So it's two 
mechanisms, one providing the ordering and one providing the membership. And what I was showing you there was the presence of a title in the list field does not grant that tittle of the tag. So you saw how I removed the tag, tag sidebar, from the tiddler core UI sidebar open. And yet that tiddler is still listed in the list field here, so but that so is not sufficient to grant it the tag status. Yes. So oh, what determined oh, open that again though. I just have a question before we go away from that, because that was Oh, not that one. It was um yeah. which one was it? The sidebar, I think. Didn't really yes. where's it? Where it gone? Where's it gone? That sidebar. It doesn't um so this is a list of tiddlers that implies an order. And that list is called upon from time to time to reveal the order. But in order to... Whenever we... Re whenever you... That order is when we're asked to retrieve the list of tiddlers with a particular tag. Yes. And you... Re and in a sense, you provide a report, a list of the tiddlers, but if it's not, if that tiddler doesn't have the tag, being on the list just doesn't help. Precisely that. Precisely that. So, I mean, th th we're now there getting... there is a way to see that list, is if you directly transclude that list from that, from that yeah. tiddler, you'll get all the members of the list, because yeah. that list belongs to the sidebar tiddler. It doesn't belong to the tiddler that it references. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's just, that's, and so it's, and lists could also be, I would imagine, with some cleverness, dynamically generated on the fly within a wiki. They're expected to be um, a list, as in a specific sequence of items, rather than a filter, which can generate a list of items, if you see what I mean. Okay. Um, so those are... You could imagine a different, um, a slightly different interpretation of TiddlyWiki where that was done differently, for sure. Okay, so a, f a list is not a filter. <laughs> no, it's a list, um, and filters um, produce lists. So now there's one final piece of complexity. So filters um, produce lists in it. Uh, it's it's a slightly it's a different use of that word list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that list can then be, um, they, so filters produce a sequence of things, and yes. that sequence can be stored as a list field within a tiddler. So um, now, the, look, the problem with the arrangement that we've just seen is that I added this wonderful new sidebar tab with mm -hmm. those three dots as the title. I don't want it to be on the right. I want it to be on the left. In order to do that, with what I've shown you so far, I have to go into tag sidebar and edit it, to add myself into that list. So mm -hmm. I can do that. So if I copy that, do that, um, then magically my, I move to the left. But the problem is that I've had to modify this tiddler tag sidebar, which actually takes us back to the problem we talked about with main menu, mm -hmm. that if I've got several plugins that all want to add tabs to the right-hand tab, then they all need to modify this same tiddler in order to order themselves. So we don't do that. Um, so let me throw away my changes to um, tag sidebar. And um, instead, on my new tab, I'm going to add a field list after. And I'm going to put core, let's get the title right, um, core UI sidebar. Recent, I'm going to do, and then I'm going to add that field, and now you can see that I move my tab moved to be after the indicated one. So, um, oh, sorry, that's not the thing I meant to open. I'm so sorry, confusing myself. So this guy here, um, we we put it in the order we wanted instead of by including it in the list field of that tag. Instead of that, we use this list after field on the tiddler itself to say, once you've assembled the ordering list from the list of tiddlers, then just insert this tiddler, sorry, this tiddler immediately after the specified tiddler. But that's a little... Um... Arcane. 
not arcane, I was going to say radical. It's, what it's done is it's given us the full set of choices about where to make the modification. Yes. In order, so it gives you the best of both worlds, the central place where you I open, can just you open the sidebar right below it, so like close control panel and stuff, keep that yeah. one open, and then open the sidebar right below it. Because, or above it, yeah. or yeah. Uh, somewhere I've got this list. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that one. No. Yeah, and um, so right. this is where this list field, this list tab of the is useful. So there we see the list that's declared on the tag, and then here we're making a mod, a dynamic modification. Yeah, so I would call that radical because you um, dot 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 tiddler are inserting yourself into tag sidebar as though you're a list, but you're not really in the list. So you don't really have that membership, but yet you're there and it's, it's, hmm. and you could just, yeah. you, you could sequence this as well. If you put, um, can you do a list after dot, dot, dot now? Somewhere else. Yeah, that's great. That's so I could create another sidebar. Um, um, you, so I'll create a clone of this. Right. And we'll call it, um, I'm not sure what character that is, three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, three of those. Perfect. Um, uh, and then it change uh, recent. Change, yeah, exactly. Change recent. Right. Keep that. Just put it the three dots. That, right. Oh, that's all you need? Mm-hmm. That's, I think of that as radical. Um, well, the interesting thing then, of course, that one needs to do is to move this one and then to observe the way that um, both, so both the dot, dot, dot yes. one, what are those things called? Not pike staffs. But um, paragraph marks. Or, yeah, I don't know the, I don't know the, yeah. But there's a word for them. Um, yeah. that, We'll have to ask. The first, I think so, I yeah. go with ellipsis. If you have three of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's ask. It's called. It's something like a. What does that symbol mean? Oh, what you had it right. Um, the pico. You had it. It was right there. The, where does it say? Pilcrow. Oh, pilcrow. pilcrow. Yeah. Got it. So pilcrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to do it again because. Yeah. Um, but what we were did there was we changed. The so this time I'm going to move the dot 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 ellipsis to the one dot to the left again. Your direction may differ because yes. I've been through. and uh, there we go. And, and the follow, yes, moves as well. So, so these, the, the what a lot of what we've been exploring here is the same things that came up in the first three minutes. It's the idea of structuring things with lists, elaborate lists. But a consideration being whether it's the list you modify or whether it's the thing that's the member of the list and how we see that same concern reflected both in the question of how to give things a tag, but also in the question of how we provide an ordering for items that have the same tag. So I quite like that. I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a great example of TiddlyWiki's folding complexity and you know the some a lot of what we've talked about is going to be invisible to most people using tiddlers we talked before about how tiddlers stemmed sorry tags stem from the classic flicker model of tags and um people who recognize that model in tiddlywiki be able to use tags in tiddlywiki very effectively without knowing any of this stuff the you know the ordering question really it it arises here when we're designing tiddlywiki's user interface but it's fairly arcane otherwise well i would disagree in a sense for my students um who are 
tasked with designing and writing interactive texts. And so yeah, yeah. your students are advanced though. <laughs> well, but this is a profession. Amongst the most advanced, I think. Are they? I think so. I think it's 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 one Oh you've frozen. Oh, I'm sorry. You've frozen. I haven't. Um let me know when you're hearing me again. Um since we're still recording, what I'm going to say, though, is I think it's wonderful that we have this platform to explore in. And um, I, I, I think it's distinctive um, and I think it's unique. So, Jeremy, have you come back? I am. I'm back in the room. Um, what I was Steve, saying was that, that, that I, I still find TiddlyWiki unique and distinctive in its ability to allow me to introduce these concepts to students. Yeah, and I think it's unusual that these concepts go so deep. So I think there are other tools that you could illustrate tagging, but this kind of elaborate working through of the consequences of trying to use tags as the structuring mechanism for, a, in our case, a hypertext interface, but in your case, a hypertext work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is, you don't see this anywhere else. You don't see, um, you know, in, in other places, that this way in which TiddlyWiki is able to laboriously build concepts, you know, they're layered one on the other to get us to where we need to get to. Whereas, and you don't really see that elsewhere, tags, for instance, are a feature of many, many, many bits of software from the OS X finder upwards, downwards. Um, but there is, uh, you know, in, in no situation do people build on tags to provide something um, more flexible, except maybe, I guess, in the, in the world of RDF, um, you know, the world of the semantic web would look at tags and I think um, recognize that, you know, something that they've got a, a, a much more general mechanism for um, in, in triples and so I mean, um, arguably, we haven't, well, Another discussion, and it's yes. uh, I'm um, out of time. But well, tags and tuples, anyway, tuples. Yes, this was this was a great conversation. Um, thank you, and um, I'll send you a, a, a link and um, welcome great. comments when you get a chance. One of the things that I thought would be interesting to think about for the next two weeks was to bring up student projects and sort of do a quick critique of them. Yeah, I'd then, love that. And I will send you a list of them um, and we'll sort of decide which ones to look at. We can each spend 15, 20 minutes ahead of yeah. time. I think, um, I think that would be really fun. I, I mean, I, yeah, we talked about this before. It'd be very useful. Yeah. Um, and look, tomorrow, if I end up that I'm available, then um, I think I should well, you know, I'll, I'll let you know and I'll pitch up. But um, I'm not 100% sure which way it's going to go yet. Okay. Um, we, we had a, 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 I'll leave you with one quick one half minute story. We had an interesting uh, workshop last night and there's tension in some level between Hagart, who's one of the open students from New Zealand and James Ward, who's one of my students in Utica. Um, and he, he comes to campus and James I've known for a, quite a long time. He's building a closed system. Um, so he, he's stripped all the stuff around and he's building an app in a sense for his clients. Um, he's a photographer of weddings and he wants to be able to give them an app so they can browse through the thing. He's taking all possibility of interaction. And, and I said, well, it's just like not the way that TiddlyWiki is built. It, it was really interesting. And Hagar's the opposite way. He's building a CRM. And is James using TiddlyWiki for that? Oh, yes. Everything's TiddlyWiki. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, but gosh, he's, how interesting. Yeah. Be really good. Locking it down. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I quite like the, I like the fact that TiddlyWiki it strives to be both an environment for writers and an environment for readers. And so things, experiments that kind of accentuate how different those sides can be, pretty cool. Be it, very they both came to the conclusion that they had to remove, to use title as a key and not let users change the title of Tiddlers. Yeah. And so, so Hagart wrote this great thing that, just a radio button thing, hide show for the, for the pieces of view template, which I've needed. I never knew how to do it. So now I can get rid of the title and everything. And I just have the text field in my, it's perfect. Okay. So look, I'm going to have to show you something. One yeah. more quick screen share. Okay. Um, my concept um, here is that 
this user interface of TiddlyWiki, i.e. the user interface with all of these bits, everything that you're familiar with, um, when we think of TiddlyWiki as an application platform, this is actually the same functionality as this, the browser developer tools. So okay. you know, when, you, when we build applications in TiddlyWiki, Almost everything that I see here in the user interface, and particularly the idea of a tiddler with toolbar buttons that you can do stuff to, sure. um, is no more appropriate in an application that's there for a specific purpose than all of these kinds of behind the scenes general purpose facilities are appropriate for the user, you know, the, the, the disinterested user of an ordinary website. Mm -hmm. So I think of this as being the um the sort of author's interface the developer's interface almost yeah. um and um and part of yeah and trying to build yes steve thank you <laughs> great <laughs> as ever great fun hopefully see you tomorrow if not next week okay, many sure. thanks see you bye, bye.